On this episode of the Naturist Living Show, South Africa. episode of the Naturist Living Show is brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. At Bear Oaks, we offer traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Free your body, free your mind. www.bearoaks.ca Welcome, dear listener, to episode 74. And unlike my comment at the end of the last show, it certainly has not been about a month. It's been probably hours <laughs> since I made the last show available because I'm catching up, um, making sure I get 12 episodes in 2014 because otherwise it's been six years and I haven't missed that in six years. Uh, this year has been a little inconsistent in terms of having a show every month. So I'm catching up in December, and this episode will make it 12 for 2014, so that you get everything you paid for. So welcome to this episode. And uh, we did get also earlier, uh, a little while ago, a comment on the voice line, Um, so from... uh, San Diego from Eddie, so I'll play that for you now. Hi, Stefan. Good evening. My name is Eddie, and I'm calling from San Diego. And my comment to you is that you have a pretty great podcast in iTunes where it's that I download most of the episodes, and uh, throughout work, I am able to listen to each one of them. And um, I've been listening for the past two months, most of your podcasts. And um, I was wondering if there is any information that you may want to share or if uh, anywhere you want to point to where I can gather more information and places. As I live in San Diego close to the border with Mexico and there's, it's really not so open down here about uh, becoming a nudist, uh, naturism. And it's something that about two years ago, I started to become more open through yoga and meditation. And I would like to be able to find out uh, about uh, more communities or uh, not resorts for that nature or for that size of a uh, club but um, where to get started, get more information, you know, little by little, get uh, get more into the, uh, the the lifestyle of becoming a nudist. I uh, do know about Black Beach, and that's one of the uh, places that this last summer, uh, as soon as I had a chance, I was able to visit that. And I probably started doing that about, I probably did that for like about 10 to 15 times uh, last summer. And it was great. I love the idea. I love being nude at home. It's something that I am uh, more aware of. And uh, it's just that I enjoy it more. Being at home, doing my homework, nude, uh, go to sleep nude. You know, I just don't have the feeling of... uh, I just don't think that I have to be close to be able to do everything that I do. Sometimes I even take my clothes while I'm driving down from the freeway. Uh, might not be the safest thing to do while there's other people driving around, but, you know, it's uh, pretty comfortable, and I really like the idea, and hopefully if there's if there's actually not a lot that I can do down here in San Diego, I think that I might look into probably traveling or moving to a different state where there is more uh, openness. You know, I'm also Mexican, so uh, Mexico does not have that in that culture, in my culture, there's not a lot of people that are uh, stigma and, you know, and taboo and all this is part of the culture. So it's something that, you know, can't even think about being nude anywhere. So, again, I would really, I really like the show. Thank you very much for uh, doing this for us. 
the community, uh, society. I think that through people like you, it's uh, becoming more popular, and we need more people to do this this kind of uh, awareness to society. And that's also another thing that I've been thinking about doing a uh, podcast in Spanish for uh, the, the community here in, in the South. Thank you, Eddie, for calling in and leaving a comment. Um, and I, I definitely would not recommend moving. Um, you know, the grass is always greener somewhere else, but Southern California has tons of opportunities for naturism. Um, and if that's your er- your area and you know people and you know uh, what goes on there and you're settled, that's that's a strength in itself in terms of further expanding naturism. So I know that Black Beach is beautiful. You mentioned that. Uh, I've never been there, but I've heard from a number of people what a wonderful place it is. It's had some challenges in recent years, but it's still a good place to network. And I think that's the key. Uh, you you want to meet people, and we're social animals. People often say, why is it that uh, you know you have to be naked with others? Well, because we like to be with others. So there are clubs. There are a number of places listed online. There's a number of uh, groups that you can join, discussion groups, and ask questions. That's one of the best ways to meet people and to get in connections with others. Um, it is, uh, you know, you do have to kind of weigh things. We've talked on the show a lot about the difference between ethical naturism and just recreational naturism, and you have to decide what's for you and what you're looking for. And so you have to be a little bit careful because what other people call nudism or naturism is not necessarily what you're looking for or what we've been talking about in this show. So I would not recommend moving um, because I always hear that people say how France is so much more open. And in a lot of ways it is, and there's a ton of opportunities in France. But when you visit France, you also learn that the laws there are more restrictive when it comes to nudity in places where you're not supposed to. So beaches are tolerated, but you certainly can't be nude in a park. You could be in Germany. But each country and culture has its own challenges, and uh, you have to pick the one that you're more comfortable in and work with that. So, But, you know, speaking of culture, the fact you speak Spanish and you're Mexican I think is awesome. There is a new Mexican Naturist Federation in Mexico. You can find it through the INF website. Um, inf-fne.org I'll put a link to the in the show notes to that and it would be great actually if you got in contact with them because just because they are in Mexico doesn't mean that they couldn't help you in developing um, naturism in the San Diego area especially for uh, Spanish speaking uh, Americans and, and residents of California so you could work with them if you want to do a podcast as you suggested in Spanish that would be awesome I wish there were more podcasts. So if you need help with that, feel free to be in contact with me, and I'll give you some hints on how to do that. But your Spanish language podcast could be also a podcast that is promoted by the uh, Mexican Naturist Federation. So I think that's awesome. That's great. And if any of the listeners out there would like to uh, help Eddie, uh, please, uh, you can either send me a note or actually what's best is just record a comment back and I'll put it on the show. Again, remember, if you want to leave a comment, it's very simple. You just dial the Bear Oaks phone number, which is either 905-473-6060 and you dial extension 333 or you can reach us by Skype which is the Skype name for Bear Oaks, is Bear Oaks. Again, that puts you in the main phone system, and then you just dial extension 333, and you can record your own comment, or record it on your computer and send it in by email to me. Uh, if it's anything interesting and good, and I think the audience will want to hear, I'll be happy to put it on the show. Hi, Felicity. Hey, Stefan. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, but I wish I'd had a chance to go to the uh, preview screening of Freedom Nipple. I heard you got to go. Yeah, it uh, first premiered in New York City, so I went and saw it at the IFC Theater. Um, I went to the preview, like, movie premiere for it, and I also was part of the line of women in the row who went top free to support the cause. Hey, that's awesome. Is that why you got in? Because you're a well-known top free activist? No, actually, they just, um, they had people putting out the word that they were going to give free tickets to uh, women who wanted to come and do that. And somebody had posted it in our main Facebook group. So that's how I found out about it. 
Okay, good. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this uh, movie. It's been around, and they, they were doing a crowdfunding, and it's been talked about a lot. So, what do you think? Is it, uh, is it worth all the hype? Yeah, um, the movement, or the I call it a campaign. I guess it's also called a movement. Um, and the movie has, has been a little while in the making. And, uh, you know, they had a Kickstarter and everything to complete it. Um, and so I saw the movie, and um, the it did really bad as far as the mainstream uh, reviews are concerned. Like, the critics were um, a bit harsh. And... And I posted in my own review on my blog, and, um, you know, I tried to look at the good and the bad, and there are some things that, um, that concern me about the movie as well as the movement. Um, and, but at the same time, I really, I still support it, and I really like what they've done, and I admire it, and I know they faced so many challenges in creating the movie and um, creating movement. Um, so what, what what are the critics, uh, not you, but what are the critics saying? I haven't read any reviews yet. Uh, the critics are saying that it's like amateurish and the characters are underdeveloped and like cliche and like the whole movie is kind of lifeless and um, they, they were pretty harsh about it. I mean, they, they acknowledge, a lot of them acknowledge that it had good intentions, you know, that um, it's... It was very like enthusiastic, and um, and all that, and they kind of it seemed like some of them just felt bad about saying bad things about it for that reason. Um, so, for, so for those who don't know what it's about, because you said characters, and it's not it's not a documentary. Can you give us a quick little synopsis of what the movie is about? Right. No, it's not a documentary. Um, it's it's a drama, um, and that it's and it's based loosely on true events. Um, and basically it follows, starts out with this journalist, um, who's played by Lena Esco and she's doing a story about these topless crusaders who are, um, fighting for the right to go topless in New York, um, where it's already legal, but, you know, as is the case in real life, uh, the cops just ignore the law and they arrest women. So she's trying to do a story and then, um... She's employed by a certain news network, but it turns out they don't want to print it, and um, they fire her. And then she ends up getting more and more involved, you know, inspires her to want to launch a whole movement about it. And she teams up with um, another activist who is the ringleader, and, and they recruit other women, and um, they stage um, some topless stunts in the streets, and uh, they get lawyers, and... Uh, and they create like a whole movement campaign, which is um, sort of what they did in real life with uh, the way it came about in real life. So and that's, that's the plot. So from it, you are you certainly know what you're talking about when it comes to top free rights in New York and all that stuff. Do you want to remind our listeners exactly what you went through? Right. Yeah, I gave a, a little summary on my blog um, about my history with with top free activism. Um, I been an activist since 2011 because um, that's when I really found out about women's right to go topless in New York. Um, and then that's also the year I was arrested. I was arrested during an art performance on Wall Street um, for being topless. And I was charged with disorderly conduct. My charges were dropped, but I wanted an apology from the city. I wanted to make a difference, so I sued. And I won, and um, my lawsuit was one of the few that led New York City to issue a memo in 2013. Um, they issued a memo to all of NYPD telling them to basically leave topless women alone. Well, good for you. That was, that was an awesome fight. <laughs> yeah. So what is, you know what you're talking about, so what do you think this movie got right, and what do you think they could have done better? Um... Well, the way, I, the way I talk positively about it, I mean, I look at it as part, as, as part of a movement as a whole. Um, you know, basically just creating a movie gets people talking about this issue and, 
and all the other issues involved that connected to top pre-equality, which is stuff like people, women breastfeeding in public, slut shaming, um, street harassment, you know, women's bodies being over-sexualized, and those, that kind of thing. Um, my main criticism, I guess, is, is that it just seems to be out of focus. Like, a lot of the movie... Um, turned into this kind of crusade against censorship. And I think there's value in that, and that counts for something, um, because, you know, it would make a huge difference if the media stopped censoring female nipples. And if social media, they're coming along slowly, you know, with the breastfeeding thing, but it would make a huge difference if that stopped being censored on TV and, and everywhere. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's value in, in uh, tackling it on a, on the, in a sense of censorship. Um, but I feel like the movie and the movement as a whole just hasn't done enough to, um, to relate it to the other issues involved with, with top free equality. And there are people who, who, of course, say that top free equality is like a small issue. And what does this matter? You know, we shouldn't be focusing on this at all. There's, there's, other things like equal pay, which Lena Esco has also talked about, um, which has been kind of weird because uh, she's she's like, oh, she's kind of saying this movie was the whole point was to bring attention to other to gender equality and issues like equal pay, and it's like, well, what does top free equality have to do with equal pay exactly? Hmm. So she's not as dedicated of a top free activist as you might have expected, then. Right. That's yeah. That's kind of the impression I get. Well, uh, is the movie out in theaters, or is it just, just is it an online thing? Where do you see it? It's in both. It's online. Um, you can get it in video on demand, iTunes, Google Play, and I think it's it's still in theaters. Um, I forget when it opens up in, in L.A. Maybe it did already. Um, but it's still in New York theater. Um, I know I saw it at the IFC theater, so people can look up IFC. Um, so, I mean, if it's not playing in a theater near you, you can get it online easily enough. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what other people say about it. The mainstream media is one thing, but we'll see what other naturists and top free activists say. Hopefully they'll share their thoughts either on the YNA.me uh, website or uh, maybe send send comments into the show or something as well. Yeah, I would love to hear comments on my blog. So if you have comments uh, on Felicity's, uh, on Frida Nipple and what Felicity said, uh, if you've seen the movie as well and you want to... Uh, send a comment you can email myself you can email felicity through her website uh yna.me the young nature's america.me um and uh or you can leave record a message and we'll put it on the show as well if you want to share your thoughts about the movie so south africa um, the as a relatively young nature's association or federation, there was one. Um, they had to be delisted for doing completely inappropriate and non nature's things. A new one started, and they seem to have a lot of very uh, passionate and effective volunteers. And I say that because um, they have achieved something which is quite amazing. They've gotten themselves an official nude beach, their first designated one. Like many countries, they had unofficial ones that were tolerated. Um, they decided to lobby to try to get a beach designated. And there was a lot of opposition, um, but they systematically knocked that opposition down over the, a year or so, very short period of time. And to the point now that this beach is not only an official naturist beach, the government has committed to enforce naturist standards of behaviors and ethic uh, on the beach. So that means that things that are not normally illegal in other parts of South Africa um, will be against the rules on the beach and you will be enforced by law enforcement. So, for example, taking pictures of people without their permission. So as far as I know, this is the first naturist beach where naturist standards are being applied because it's a public place. Certainly in clubs and resorts that are private areas, you can enforce these naturist rules and regulations that uh, we all abide by as good ethical naturists. But on public beaches, of course, that's sometimes a problem because people 
are not bound by the same rules. And in public spaces, it's more difficult to have uh, restrictions and limitations that are not that don't apply to the rest of the world. So I'm very impressed. And so I uh, gave a call to uh, Serge Pavlovich from the Western Cape Naturist Association so who could tell us all about how he managed to get there. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Serge. I'm currently vice chairman of South African Naturist, uh, National Naturist Association, as well as spokesperson. And I'm also chairman for Western Cape Naturist uh, Association. That's good. And you have been very busy recently because you've had a big win, right? Yeah, we've been busy for, I think, the last three months. Uh, it's been hectic traveling around the country, giving interviews to the media and succeeding in our ultimate goal, which, quite frankly speaking, we did not believe that we will be able to. We got first uh, official Naturist Beach in South Africa. Naturist Nudist, whichever way you want to call it. Well, congratulations. Now, official, that means the government's approved it? Yes, uh, local municipality of uh, Hibiscus Coastal Municipality in on south coast of KwaZulu-Natal, which is a province here in South Africa, have uh, made a decision uh, that they're going to make uh, only about 500 meters of the beach, but it's better than nothing official beach, where even official naturist code of conduct would, would apply. So before that, uh, what did naturists do in South Africa? Yeah, we had, uh, uh, I think we got uh, four, maybe even five beaches that are very well known in the country that naturists have visited over the period of years. Uh, the most popular one and the most famous one is Sandy Bay in Cape Town down here that is still not officially declared as a naturist beach. Uh, there is one in Port Elizabeth, another one in Durban, and in Pijati Beach, which is uh, just outside Port Edward on the south coast of uh, Kozulu Natal. So what, what risk did people take in going to those unofficial beaches? Uh, uh, to be honest with you, Stefan, uh, there is not much risk uh, uh, anymore besides being... Uh, interrupted by people that are really there for some other reason than uh, naturist uh, reason. Uh, in the past, for example, people were arrested on the, especially on Sandy Bay, uh, but that doesn't happen any longer. These beaches are commonly known as naturist beaches, and what we have done with Pijati Beach, we've taken that, uh, we believe, in natural progression or ne next step, and declared that uh, Official, we put an official request to uh, municipality over there, requesting to, because of the reasons that people are already knowing it as a uh, naturist beach, to officially declare it so we can promote it. We can uh, uh, get in touch with the tourism board, for example. We can uh, post it uh, in, on international sites and promote it properly as the tourist attraction of the region. So what what will why did you if you weren't being arrested anymore why was it important for you to have uh, an official nature's beach? It's a, a, a few reasons behind that. Uh, first reason is why not? I mean, if it's already nature's beach, why not? The second reason, as I mentioned earlier on, I don't know if you find it on your beaches over there, but we, especially in the last decade or so, we're finding that uh, uh, visitors to Naturist Beach is, uh, beaches becoming more unruly, if you will. They, they, they're really uninformed uh, what is actually to be expected on Naturist Beach and how one should behave on Naturist Beach. So we had the problems. We had the problems that people would be taking photographs of without their permission and those photographs would land on the internet site and some of these people are highly up with, with uh, very well known companies for example over here so we had a situation that people were worried about their jobs they, they're going to be ridiculed at work if nothing else or they're going to be able to keep the jobs uh, that they have and <clears throat> that's the first thing then we had uh, uh, on, I think that's a pretty much trend all over the world that on certain uh, certain times in a certain point of the beach you got sexual activities, you got a perving, you got all sorts of disturbance. 
So we thought perhaps if we go and declare it official, not only that we will be able to attract that uh, untouched segment of tourism, which is naturist travel, uh, but we will be able to sort of bring the law and order to the beach. Um, we have agreed and the municipality has accepted that uh, in, in KwaZulu Natal that we will supply them with a sign which will have the beach etiquette as well as naturist conduct on it. And that will effectively become a part of bylaws. So if you're going to have a, a, a situation like taking a photograph without explicit permission, for example, then we will be able to enforce and request for the, that person, if nothing else, to delete that photo and not use it. Or if it's used unauthorized, then one would have a other legal stance to stand on. Now, it's an interesting, uh, it's a very interesting situation because you're right, in a lot of beaches, even when they're official, uh, there are problems with people taking pictures, uh, people, uh, men harassing women, uh, things like that. But yeah. what I find is uh, if they're not breaking a law in Canada or in the U.S., for example, yeah. the police yeah. will not do anything uh, because taking a picture is not illegal. You, you, have, you think you will get support to prevent that from happening? We, we do have, as, as I mentioned to you now, we do have agreement, and we, we have even uh, sent them last uh, few days proposed sign that will be erected on uh, each side of the beach and, or any access points to the beach. And uh, they, that would be a part of bylaw that would apply to that beach. So it, it is going to be actually illegal to have a photograph taken on that particular beach without person being in that photograph giving explicit permission to that. Which I think is a unique situation around the world, not only in South Africa. We, we felt that just having a simple sign which, which is going to say, Beyond this point, you may encounter a nudity. It doesn't really help because, no, as right. you right say, uh, it is still public place. And by definition, I don't know what laws apply in in, South, uh, in, in America and Canada, but yeah, in South Africa, if it is a public place, you do not need anybody's permission right. to take anybody's photos. But now, because we we, we have changed the bylaws, which applying to that particular stretch of the beach. Now we got a legal stay to stand on. So uh, what, what will happen? So you will call the police and they will arrest a person, you think? Or how will the enforcement happen? I think, first of all, one would think twice before even go and thinking of taking a photograph of anybody without asking permission to do so. Of course, we would expect when families go on the beach uh, that they would take a photos of each other and that, that is not a problem, uh, of course, anyway around the world to do so. But uh, then if something like that happened, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Beginning of this year, we had a situation that a gentleman was forced to pay uh, five and a half thousand rand would be about five hundred fifty dollars to the person that has taken photo of him without his permission because he, it was a play over there and they pick up the fight and he has thrown gentleman's camera into a sea. So he effectively needed to replace the camera of the offender in our viewpoint uh -huh. and, and, he, and he was no no guilt on his part besides being nude on the beach do you understand what i'm saying yes. so in order to avoid that this this code of conduct that would apply to that stretch of the beach you would be able to walk to a person that just taken a photo of you and ask him politely to delete the photo and if he refuses to do so yes you would be able to call a police in order to sort out uh, your problem that you're currently having. Well, that's great. I mean, that is actually a very unique situation, and I think I congratulate you on that win. Um, how, how, how did you do it? <laughs> we have put a, a, first of all, to be honest with you, it was the idea from KwaZulu Natal Nature Association, which was established on, uh, in May this year, and I think what the, the first thing that they have done as an association is that request for the beach to be recognized. So uh, they have started at all. And to be honest with you, we, we didn't really believe that much uh, would 
happen, if anything at all. Right. So uh, uh, then, uh, then they've been informed and invited by the municipality to do the presentation, attend the public debate, and they felt that they're not really capable of doing that on their own, and that's where they request uh, help from SANA. And that's when we, uh, South African National Nature Association, got involved. So we went and we attended the public debate and answered all sorts of questions and listened to all sorts of arguments, which really, um, in a way, it was easy to deal with opposition because all arguments that they have had uh, were not really based on any facts. It was a more of a tamsak than anything else. So. We have attended that public debate. After that, we have attended a couple of other uh, council meetings. We had an online petition as well that we submitted with our papers. We went and uh, investigated further. They asked us, for example, council has asked us if we can give them any economic impact, possible, of course, economic impact that beach will have on the, on the region in case that they declare the beach official. So it was a lot of work, it was lots of investigation, it was lots of lobbying behind the scene, it was lots of working together with the municipality and parties involved and leaders of communities and all of that, and talking to people that were against the whole idea, uh, you know, not, not arguing with anybody, but just trying to bring the reasoning uh, into the whole story. And I think that was the, the reason that we have su succeeded, because uh, suddenly we had a media from all over the country asking for these interviews, and one interview would follow the other because of the way that we have approached the whole issue. First thing that we said to, to everybody is, we're not reinventing a wheel over here. We, we're not bringing anything new to the region. Nature is we're going to that part of the beach for the last 20 years. So what we are doing, we're just saying, let's just formalize it. Let's bring the uh, law and order, if you will, uh, to that part of the beach. And let's see what we can do further regarding tourism, which, by the way, for her business uh, municipality is a large part of the GDP, uh, yearly GDP. That's very tourist-oriented area. So let's see if we can bring that part of, of tourism that nobody pays attention to and it's quite substantial around the world in South Africa too uh, uh, to, the, to, to, to your part of the coast and then we went and spoken to a couple of other B&Bs, uh, there's only a small boutique hotel in the area but few guest houses around and see who would be prepared to welcome naturists or be naturists friendly uh, so we, we have done lots of work, but one thing we have made always sure that we didn't want to actually pick up fight with anybody, we didn't want to argue with anybody, we didn't want to rid uh, ridicule anybody, which we've been uh, ridiculed so many times, but we just sort of brushed it off and carried on, stayed the line and stayed the course and uh, be friends with everybody. <laughs> and work with everybody that, that, that came across our path. And I think uh, even though that, that final decision was a big, big uh, a shock for us, because even to the end, even while we were looking in the ag at the agenda for the meeting, final meeting, and seeing that uh, a municipality manager has recommended uh, beach to be declared naturalist beach, we still didn't believe until those show of hands went into air and majority of councillors uh, voted in our favour. So you said you had some opposition. Uh, w why were people opposed to it? Who was opposed to it? And how did you deal with it? Uh, opposition was the usual suspects, I would, I would think. You know, it was uh, uh, opposition which was based... Uh, mostly on emotions, uh, as uh, we, don't, we don't have to say it, we naturally know that our movement is not seen as the uh, day-to-day thing, you know, and hardly accepted all around the world. Uh, so, in South Africa as well, being a traditional country that very recently, I mean, 1994 was just the other day, that we say goodbye to apartheid uh, and, and racial discrimination in the country, and uh, uh, so it was a very emotional position of the residents uh, from the area, you know, it was 
high emotions in that public debate. It was lots of shouting and uh, behaving a little bit untoward. But then you had the other opposition, which was traditional leaders, which we also take it in, into equation in this country over there. There's a lots of tribes that got their own traditional leaders with a good couple of hundred thousands of people that following whatever local chief says, and they were against it. And then, of course, uh, a religious community uh, was, uh, as I said, another usual suspect that was our opposition over there. And I don't have to repeat what the basis of the arguments was. It, it was more uh, saying that nudism or naturism is immoral thing to do than anything else. So did you change their minds, or what, how did you uh, go get around this this opposition? Well, we have uh, we have taken a very holistic approach to it. Uh, first of all, we have listened every single argument they had, and asked them to give us the 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 base on which they're basing their arguments. And in most of the time, they didn't have it. They 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 just. Uh, stated that that's their personal opinion without any analysis or statistics or previous experience. It's something that they're really guessing about. Uh, when it comes to religious leaders, we went into a Bible, we quoted uh, certain citations in the Bible and, and argue from that viewpoint uh, with them. <clears throat> when it comes to the uh, traditional leaders, we really didn't know what a point of argument was because any traditional ceremonies we are in this country, if nothing else, women are topless. So, uh, and and men got to just loin cloth on them. So, they 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 almost naked anyhow. So, what's the difference between that and us walking down the beach sure. in nude, suntan in the nude? So, so as I said, we. We, we tried to reason. Uh, we, we didn't uh, uh, fight. Uh, we supported all our statements with valid facts, statistics, surveys. Uh, we brought, for example, uh, uh, statistics from the other uh, beaches around the country, which what was a different prior to being declared official and uh, impact on tourism, and we even went and investigated parking fees that were collected at Cap de Arc, for example, and things like that. So so we, we have done all of that. And then at the end, uh, I think one thing that has swayed the council in our favor to a large extent is uh, chapter of our South African constitution, which uh, uh, clearly stipulates that Nobody can discriminate uh, against naturists, uh, which was uh, not written as a naturist in constitution, but it was interpreted that it is our belief uh, and way of life. And uh, even though that we are a minority in this country, and for that matter around the world, by South African constitution, we cannot be discriminated against. So I think we find that protection in in in. in in that regard as well. So I think overall, when I think back now, and even though that at certain stage it was uh, battle stations, all hands on deck, and a little bit panic response to what we needed to respond, I think we have taken that holistic approach to the whole issue, and we have worked hard to to, to supply uh, not only municipality but public at large with uh, lots of arguments that were based on facts. That's great. So, what's what's the next step? Uh, more beaches? The next step is now. First of all, we need to finish with Mpijati because a municipality really wants to go a whole nine yards, as uh, you guys from North American continent uh, would say. They want to have a decent evolution block over there, which would be environmental friendly. So, we're looking at some uh, evolution block that block that won't use much of the water. It will be self-contained. And, and environmental friendly, uh, then obviously signs need to be erected. Uh, they were going to have even lifeguard on the beach, uh, so it makes it safe for people to swim. Uh, and, and because of all of that, there's a little bit of red tape to go through before beach officially will be ready to welcome naturists on it. 
And of course, we would like to do sort of a ceremony to to really make it a bit of uh, pomp and ceremony of the day. <laughs> uh, so all that together is going to take us another couple of months. But in the meantime, on 14th of December, we will be on Sandy Bay over here in Cape Town celebrating World Naturalist Day for Southern Hemisphere. And uh, in P in Port Elizabeth on Secret Beach as well, which is another naturalist beach a year, which is also unofficial. And uh, on Sandy Bay, we're going to start with petition for declaring Sandy Bay official naturalist beach. So that's going to be our next step to do. Uh, I feel a little bit sorry that Impejati Beach is the first official beach because I always regarded Sandy Bay as a, a heritage of South African naturism. Uh, it, it, it is cradle of South African naturism. Uh, so uh, I always wanted Sandy Bay to be. And we down here in Western Cape Nature Association, which I'm chairman of, uh, we have spoken to uh, officials last three years already. But uh, we, we didn't succeed. Uh, I think that willingness down here was not there in, in the last three years, as it was in KwaZulu Natal. And I think now, because we have broken that record in KwaZulu Natal, I think everything else now is going to be much easier. We know how to deal now, for example, with municipality. We know what they're looking for. We know how to argue the opposition. Uh, and I think. Uh, I think within a year, I might, I probably will not be surprised if we're going to have three, four naturalist beaches declared in South Africa as official naturalist beaches. Well, that is, uh, th that's incredible. In fact, that makes probably South Africa one of the most active and successful countries in terms of developing uh, naturism. Um, are you, do you think you can sustain this momentum? Will what if what if people you know you convince these municipalities and they spend this money developing the uh, services and people don't come? <laughs> Look, as, as uh, life is, there's no guarantees in life. You know, one can just do his or her best and then hope for the best. So we definitely not going to wait for the municipality to make it working we, through our contacts through INF and you guys, for example, and. I, myself personally, uh, for the last uh, three, four years that I'm chairman of Western Cape Nature Association, uh, I have developed the contacts from around the world and in South Africa, and, and definitely we will work on those contacts. As I said, our, our approach is going to be multi-dimensional. We're going to go and work with Tourism Board of South Africa. We're going to go and see to talk to Council of Travel Agents of South Africa. Then we're going to see if we're going to find the travel agent that's going to be interested to work and organize the packages or tours or whatever that case may be in order to really put the <coughs> effort behind it. As I said, we are very grateful to Hibiscus Coastal Municipality because they really have taken different approach to a whole uh, a meta. I mean, they they have done their homework as well. I'm talking about officials or municipality, and they really went into the making the decision with really open mind and open eyes. And we feel that because they they played fair, that we need to be fair as well. So we will put effort behind it to promote it and and make it work uh, as much as we can, of course. But I think the, the, the reason that we are busy and that we sort of making the grounds over here in South Africa when it comes to naturism is because we sort of, uh, uh, I think from 2010, we have changed our approach to whole idea uh, and how to promote the naturism in the country. We, we have decided that we're going to open up a naturist association which is going to be provisional national naturist association. So we can do that work closer to the ground. We can establish those personal relationships with local authorities. We can actually have the time or day time that they can sit down and listen who we are all about and, and clear those misconceptions and misunderstandings and, and, and all wrong perceptions that the public at large has about naturism and actually promote the naturism in true light to, to what it is. So being closer to the ground, we, we Basically, what I'm talking about is uh, we moved away to have uh, that national association which is going to then dictate to rate the rest of the country what to do. We said we, we need to be closer to a naturist in your local areas. 
and see what they want, in which direction they want to go and what they want to do, and then take that up to the national level and with, with SANA being representative on national level and international level, perhaps take it to INF and take it to the rest of the world and, and show to the rest of the world that by being closer to the ground and having people more involved, involved on a day-to-day basis, that lots of more things can be done. So perhaps that's why we, we, we're busy as we are. This, this is your chance, Serge. Uh, there's listeners from uh, New Zealand to Canada, which is about as far as you can travel. And uh, yeah. they all have naturist opportunities where they are. So why should they travel all the way to South Africa for naturism? What's in South Africa that was exciting? The, the, you don't have Africa in New Zealand or Canada. <laughs> Africa is a special continent on its own. Uh, I, I have come uh, 23 years ago uh, to South Africa or Cape Town to use it as a bridge to come to you guys in Canada or perhaps go down to New Zealand. I didn't want to go to Australia. I don't know why. But uh, I promise you it didn't take me three months and I decided not to go anywhere else. I stayed here yeah, and I'm even married to a South African woman today which is also nature, which by the way, first time when she heard that, that I'm nature, she had a typical South African public response, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and today she is a nature. So what I'm trying to say, yes, you can travel to New Zealand, you can travel to Canada, they, they're beautiful countries in its uh, own right, but there's only one Africa on this earth, and, and, and that is down here, where we are. So if you want to visit South Africa, I'll provide links in the show notes to, with lots of information. I've never been myself, but I'd love to go. Um, I haven't really been south of the equator um, other than on a cruise once in the Caribbean. I'm not sure that counts. Um, and uh, But I'd love to, and I hope to get to South Africa. Um, I also hope to, I will likely get to New Zealand for the next Naturist Congress in 2016, as you heard in two episodes ago, that's where we're having the next Congress. And I hope to get to um, Australia as well. And uh, as a long-time listener, you will know that uh, I have a number of contacts in Australia, and we've had a number of Australians on the show, and we have a number of listeners down under as well. And so um, Michael and Darren decided that they would love to have a regular segment like Felicity does on our show um, and where they could talk about what's going on in, uh, in New Zealand, in Australia, etc. They're from Australia. So um, here's the very first segment, and it's Michael uh, telling us a little bit about what's going on in Australia. <music> Hi, and welcome to the first edition of Australian Nudie News. My name is Michael Connolly, otherwise known as Nudie Man. Now, who am I, you ask? Well, I'm a passionate naturist and outdoors person who has been getting naked in nature since I was a teenager. And now as an adult, I managed to squeeze in a nude hike and skinny dip in my lunch hour, which is what I'm doing now. I'm coming to you today from my favourite lunchtime skinny spot in the Aussie bush. Those tinkly noises you can hear in the background our bellbirds, and I am sitting in the river as I record this on a glorious, sunny summer's day. I run a Facebook page called Australian Naturist News, where I post items of interest about nudism, etc. I also have a blog website, nudieman.com, that's N-U-D-E-Y-M-A-N.com, as well on my Twitter account, at nudieman. And today is the second day of summer. And we are set to have a real scorcher of a summer. In the last few weeks of spring, we had temps up around 43 degrees Celsius. Perfect for getting outdoors and getting naked and getting your dose of vitamin D. Sensibly, of course, moderate sun exposure is the key. Our climate is very conducive to outdoor nude activities. With the warm weather kicking in around the end of August and starting to cool off around April, May. 
with the northern states such as Queensland being tropical having a much longer nudie season. The Aussie nature scene is nowhere as big as it is in some other parts of the world but we have a sprinkling of nude resorts and clubs in each state and legal nude beaches in every state except Tasmania which I think is too cold down there and Queensland which the government there refuses to legalise one despite us trying to get a petition with a thousand people to sign we've still only got 500 signatures and uh, you'll find a link to the petition in the show notes our nudies are somewhat of a fragmented bunch and our naturist organisations the Australian Naturist Federation and the Free Beach Association are getting the same criticisms about not being there for naturists it's the same as what I said levelled against other organisations in the Northern Hemisphere. But online there's a fairly active community, but again somewhat fractured, with many Facebook groups closed and private groups with various agendas. Through doing this podcast we are hoping to get more activity stimulated. Now here are some upcoming events from around this great land of ours. We have six states, but here's news from three of them that I've managed to find. In the state of New South Wales, where I come from, on the 21st of February 2015 is the annual Samurai Nude Beach Picnic organised by the Coast and Valley Naturist Club. I personally attended this one a few years back and I come second in the sack race. (laughs) You can get more info from the coastandvalleynaturist.com website. Coming up on the 1st of March next year is the Sydney Skinny in its third year. This is a nude swim held at Cobblers Beach, which is one of the three legal nude beaches in Sydney Harbour. It's a paid entry only, 900 metres or 350 metres nude swim, and it's uh, bound to get over 750 to 800 people, as it has in previous years. Now, most of these people, are, it's their first time to public nudity, first time they ever even thought about it, but they all get out there and they love it. You can check that out on sydneyskinny.com.au. Now, up to Queensland. On the 16th of March, at Alexandria Bay Beach near Noosa, is the Alexandria Beach Carnival. Held every year, despite being a non-legal beach, the police turn a blind eye and let it proceed. More info on the Adam and Eve website, adamandeveclub.com.au. Now, down to South Australia. On the 18th of January 2015 is the Pilwaran Maslin Beach Nude Games. Previously called the Nude Olympics, they had to change the name because of threats from the official Olympics community. More info on pilwaran.com. And that concludes our little Aussie news segment. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks to Stefan for letting me take over his show. <laughs> and thanks to my good friend Darren Yakema, who inspired me and helped this to happen. You can find more information on upcoming events on my Naturist News Facebook page, Australian Naturist News. Stefan will, I'm sure, have links to the various websites mentioned in this podcast on his website. So hopefully you've enjoyed this glimpse into the Naturist scene down under. And sometime in the future, I hope to be on this podcast again. Thanks again to Stefan and bye for now. Well, thank you, Michael and Darren. That was really well produced. Love the sounds and the backgrounds of nature. I could just imagine myself there and makes me want to go as well. So I look forward to getting more of these segments and sharing it with the audience. Well, that's all for this episode of The Nature's Living Show. Thank you, as always, for listening. My name is Stéphane Deschain, and I'm your host for this podcast and the owner of Bear Oaks Family Nature's Park. You'll find links to all the things we talked about in the show notes. The show website is naturistliving, one word, naturistliving, dot, bear oaks, B-A-R-E-O-A-K-S, dot C-A, because we're in Canada. Please keep sending your comments. Uh, the show's email address is naturistliving, one word, at bear oaks, B-A-R-E-O-A-K-S, dot C-A. Join us again in about a month for the next episode of The Naturist Living Show. This episode of The Naturist Living Show was brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Traditional values means that naturism is more than just taking your clothes off. It is a life philosophy with physical, 
psychological, environmental, social and moral benefits. Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park strives to promote those naturist values in a modern setting that provides the amenities and services that our members and visitors expect. Free your body, free your mind. Learn more at www.bearoaks.ca.